Alrighty, my friends, hello. Welcome back to another show. I would like to thank you personally for checking out our private content on the website, www.upliftinghumanity.net. Hopefully you enjoy some of the audios and the videos um, that you find there. And again, if any of you would like to speak to me, you can always, uh, you can always send emails through the contact form. But I, I, don't, uh, I don't usually respond to all the emails, so please book a private one-on-one uh, -on -one if you would like to speak to me personally. That's You just click consultations and you book and, uh, and we figure out the Skype session schedule. So, today I would like to talk to you about um, the kingdom of heaven lies within. The kingdom of heaven lies within. Um, now... This is going to be a very interesting one um, because we got to break down the kingdom of heaven. We got to we got to enter under and overstand what it means to. Uh, and again, those of you who never heard that phrase before, so so you can understand something. Uh, so most people again, this is something that's going to be more popular now as people get into the knowledge is these these kinds of differentiations in words. So esoteric wordplay. So most people understand. Most people, there's a concept, and um, let's see if you y'all could see that. Okay. So most people understand things. They stand under them. Um, you know. So we think that means to comprehend. Uh, the word comprehend means to thoroughly grasp something. But um, we want to understand, and we also want. We don't just want to stand under stuff. We want to also overstand. We want to un. We want to comprehend, we want to know something so deeply that we understand we have it inside of us, but we can also stand above it afterwards. So you also want to stand above this kind of information because it will make your soul very happy um, and you will shine brilliantly. You will shine like a thousand suns <laughs> with this kind of information. So we want to overstand uh, what we're talking about. So just so you know what that means when you hear it. So today we're, uh, so the kingdom of heaven. So everybody thinks, <laughs> now I'd, lo I'd love to quote my friend uh, Bobby Hemet. If you guys have never looked this name up, please go to YouTube, type in Bobby Hemet. That's H-E-M-M-I-T. Bobby Hemet, amazing teacher. Uh, in fact, the word Baba, which means Bobby, uh, comes, the word Baba means teacher, actually where you get, you know, Baba, Papa, or you get Father from. Um, so you also get Bobby from that. Um, great teacher. So one of the things he said is, what if the God you worship is the devil, and the devil you hate was God? Um, let me say that again. What if the God that most people worship is the devil? And what if the devil that everybody hates was the, was the true God, was the Most High? But we, but most people on this planet serve the most low. Now they don't know it, um, but that's that's how things go. Things have been flipped. Everything is backwards. Most things are backwards on this planet. What the devil or whoever, whatever you want to call it, what the forces that be on this planet, what they do is they take everything and they just they just turn it around. So they they flip everything upside down. They flip. You know, English itself is a backwards language, so anagrams, there's words within words that if you unscramble some of the letters, you find the true words in there. Um, same applies for a lot of the concepts. If everybody is worshiping a man, if everybody is waiting on a man named Jesus Christ to come back, do you really think they got him right and they got everything else wrong? Uh, so you think they got the Jesus Christ guy. So everything is backwards, so... Um, so you'll find that in your research. Fortunately, or unfor it's actually a fortunate thing because the truth will set you free, whereas the lies will, they'll, you'll think you're free, but you're not free. Um, and you won't know what freedom is until you're free. Okay, you won't know what an apple is until you, this is an apple in your mouth. I can't describe, I can't make, I can't give you a definition of an apple. I can't tell you what truth or freedom is. You have to experience it for yourself. And you will, if you really sincerely want it, uh, you'll be led and guided to my my videos, somebody else's videos, or books, or people going to come into your life, animals, situations going to happen that's going to make you wake up. 
uh, to the truth and whatever it is you ask for. So we want to break down the kingdom of heaven. Um, and now everything that it talks about in the Bible, it's important for you guys to understand um, everything. Now, first of all, I think this is interesting. Um, <clears throat> the word Bible, at, so they say, <laughs> is itself uh, one of those one of those symbolic words. Uh, one of those words that hides a, a certain meaning. So you see. Now, that says basic information before leaving Earth. Uh, some would have it to also say. Um, basic instructions, right? Basic instructions before leaving earth. So the Bible in, in that sense is a coded manuscript for people with consciousness to read. Here's the thing, if you have a certain level of consciousness, if you have a certain level of consciousness, if you go and see the movie, did anybody see the movie Jupiter Ascending? Did anybody see any of the movies that are coming out with Hollywood now? If you see these movies, go watch Thor, go watch the Justice League, the superhero movies, X-Men, the Matrix, you know, all these, so many movies, uh, you know, Grey's Anatomy even, um, Men in Black, so anyway, so all these movies, if you watch them and you're awake to some degree, you're going to see stuff that you would not see if you were dead, if you were a zombie or a sheeple or whatever you want to call it. So your consciousness dictates what you will get out of something. Your consciousness dictates what you'll get out of this video, out of a book, out of... So if you're not on the frequency, you won't understand the information. The Bible is the same way. If you don't have the, the correct codes and ways to read the Bible, it will just be an obscure mythology to you. It won't make any sense. People will go around and they will worship some non-existent figure that they... so they... Conf obfuscate, they confuse everything and they will just worship some, some guy named Jesus and they have no idea what that even means or who, who it might have been talking about historically. Um, personally, I think that, well, yeah, personally I think that the, uh, the character that's in the Bible, I think there was a historical figure for sure. I think it might have been a very powerful light worker or a healer, but, um, but they try to, they, you know, they try to confuse you with the mythology that's based in the book. The book is something, the book is something that talks about the zodiac. The book, the book is a book of carbon and melanin. It's an elemental book. The Bible and, and these scriptures are books of uh, astrology, basically. And so we get too caught up. Um, they get too caught up trying to think that. Um, anyway, I know I want to finish what I was saying about the Jesus guy, but we get so caught up. Um, people have been confused. People have been confused into thinking that this was a real kind of event story that happened when really it's trying to give you a certain metaphor or it's trying to show you the procession of the equinoxes and the stars and the planets. Uh, Jesus Christ being the sun, the S-O-N or the S-U-N, the sun in the sky. Um, we all have a sun. You are the prodigal son. You are, uh, Jesus was the firstborn of many brethren, as it states in the scripture. Jesus was the firstborn of many brethren. Yahushua was the firstborn. Meaning, if he was the firstborn of his kind, of his brethren, that means there's more to come. So you are not supposed to worship Christ. You're not supposed to worship these biblical figures. You're supposed to become. You're supposed to become like like in the likeness of Christ. You're supposed to emulate what these people did. That's why they don't want you to know what Jesus Christ did uh, from the ages of 13 to the ages of about 30. They don't want you to know what he did because if you know what he did, if you know what I do, you can be like me. right? If you know what Kobe Bryant did to get to where he is as a basketball player, you can. all you have to do is do the same practices he did and, you know, and, and you'll get to his level of expertise. So, if 
you don't know what somebody did, it's hard to emulate them and be, be Christ-like if you don't know the truth about Christ. And the truth about Christ is Christ is within you. Heaven is within... Um, so, so everything that it refers to in the Bible has a cor correspondence inside the body. So again, this is basic instructions before leaving earth. It's telling you about how to use your own body. Uh, the Bible is a book that lets you know about your body. The Bible is a book that tells you how to use your body and how to, um, how to be born again of water and spirit. Okay? Flesh and blood cannot enter into my kingdom, as the, as the scripture goes. Flesh and blood cannot enter into my kingdom. Those who worship me was, must worship, uh, those who worship him must worship him in spirit. Those must, they must worship me in spirit, uh, is what the Creator would say. So flesh and blood doesn't matter what you do in, in your flesh, it doesn't matter. What you do in the spirit will get you, will get you where you need to go. Uh, uh, and so the book, the Bible is a book of the body, is telling you how to help, how to help transcend your own limitations in your body, uh, in your carbon, in the mark of the beast, which is six six six. Okay, in the mark of your your beast or your body, which is six six six, because your your body has uh, your body is made up of carbon, and carbon, if you look in the atomic table, uh, the periodic table, carbon is six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. That's what that number means. Okay, 666, that's why you always want to have sex, sex, sex. Now, there's nothing wrong with sex, but that's the whole, you know, that's even why it's called horny, and it, you know, refers to the the goat and the, the devil and all this kind of stuff. So anyway, um, I'm just trying, I just want to show you guys how a lot of this stuff, um, It's just, it's just coded. It's coded and a lot of it is backwards to throw people off. Because when you know the truth, you can't be stopped. When, you, when we know the truth, we cannot, and we won't be stopped. So the truth is something that is just spreading like a, like a beautiful plague now. Because we all need it. It's a necessary, uh, very necessary to what's happening now. So, um, so the Bible is a book that helps you decode and demystify your own body. And to turn your turn your water into wine. So you hear this thing again. I can't. Um, so again, I will I will break down at least several examples um, so you can see how this book is coded. Okay. So the Bible is a book of uh, of the body, like we said. So Jesus Christ, one of the many miracles that this figure performed was he turned water into wine. Now, water... Hey, there you go. We'll use blue for water. Um, water. Water means flesh. Okay, because your body is made up of mostly what? So water just refers to your body. Okay, now wine... Okay, you ever had a good sip of wine? Wine is something that's known as a spirit. Right? You ever gone to the bar and they have spirits, hard liquor? It's called a spirit. So when Jesus Christ, when he turned water into wine, what is it really talking about? It's not talking about actual water and wine. It's talking about you're supposed to turn your body, you're supposed to transcend physicality, you're supposed to turn your flesh into spirit. You're supposed to turn your water into wine. So that's what it has to do. That's why they drink wine in church. Okay, that's why they drink wine in church. Now the priests know, <laughs> every, every reverend, every doctor, every priest, every person, everybody with a PhD, they all know this stuff, but how come you don't? How come they have access to this information and knowledge and we don't? They could make these videos better than me. <laughs> But now, thankfully, we have time and energy, and so we have to research, research and uh, study to show yourself approved. If you do nothing else, please study. So you've got to turn your water into wine, okay? You must take your old body, okay? You cannot put new wine into an old wineskin. 
You cannot put new wine into an old wine skin. You cannot put a new spirit cannot put new wine so remember wine means spirit anytime you see wine uh, it also refers to the god of wine who's Di Dionysus uh, who's another figure who's another aspect of the Jesus mythos this Dionysus character who's the god of you know debauchery and sex and wine and all these parties and stuff the truth about Christ energy is Christ energy represents freedom and mastery and a master does not deny uh, deny himself pleasure when it's appropriate. There's times where pleasure is appropriate and there's times where you can skip out on pleasure. So you have to discern. If you really master, a master you don't deny, you don't need to deny chocolate. A master is so ahead of donuts, he doesn't even think of donuts to need to deny them. Because when you deny something actively, you're giving it energy. So as a, as a spiritual master, I'm talking to you because you're supposed to become the Christ. Okay, this book is a book about you. It's supposed to activate you. It activates your DNA and your dormant, your sleeping potential. So this book is a book about you. But if you don't read it that way, you will never, you know, perception is everything. So if you read it like a, like a real life thing that happened 2,000 years ago, that's all it's going to ever be for you. But if you if you read it with the overstanding that the secret societies and stuff and people have manipulated this over time to keep humans stupid, but to keep those in the knowledge even smarter by putting certain codes into the words themselves. And uh, so, so for the initiates to know and for you not to know, basically. So again, for the initiates to know, it's for you to know, Jesus told his disciples, and for them not to know. He was talking about the uh, these kind of hidden uh, occult knowledge. The word occult just means hidden. So you cannot put new wine into an old wine skin. Okay, and the wine. Okay, so anytime you see skin, okay, wine skin. Anytime you see they took off their clothing, okay, it just means your body. Your body is a clothing. So you cannot put the new spirit, you can't put, your new spirit can't fit into your old shitty body. So you have to upgrade, you got to eat different, you got to sleep different, you got to think different, you got to live differently, you got to be, you got to move somewhere that's more suited for you. Um, you can't put new wine, you can't put your new higher vibrational spirit into your old body. It doesn't fit, um, it doesn't fit. So. Um, so this book is, again, is about taking your new spirit and you forming a new body. Okay, because even the word, there's an Old Testament and there's a New Testament. So the Old Testament means the old body and the old mind. And the New Testament refers to the new body and the new mind. Okay, so when you transfer from the Old Testament to the New Testament, it's from the old you to the new you. You're being upgraded. Um, but you have to learn how to incorporate these changes. So now even here's another little interesting um, thing that I've uncovered. Um, so, so again, so look at the book of, uh, you guys have heard the book of Psalms, right? So again, you got to know that this is a coded book. Okay, it's a coded, coded book. Um, so here's the book of Psalms, right? Or the S at the end. Okay, book of Psalms. Now, the book of Psalms, if you turn a couple letters around, it's actually the book of lamps. You, just, you could just leave out one S. Okay, the book of Psalms becomes the book of lamps. Now lamps refers to the lights, refers to the spinning wheels, which is known as your as your chakras or your chakras or um, however you say it. So, so the Book of Psalms is a book that's meant to activate your chakra system or your your energetic system. It's meant to speed you up. Um, it's meant to speed you up. Knowledge will speed you up. There's no doubt about that. Knowledge will quicken your vibration. So. 
So again, we say the kingdom of heaven is within. Why? Because it really is. So even Adam and Eve, okay, even in Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve were in a garden. Look at, see, let me just show you some, some more of these words, just so you get a feel for this. Let me let you guys in on some secrets. <laughs> um, it's not, no more secrets though, no more secrets. Secrets don't make friends or whatever, you know. There's no more secrets anymore. So the Garden of Eden, look at this. So this is just what happens when you play with English. English, which is a, a bastardized language, which is it's a code language uh, for people with knowledge to understand and people like you and I to just not know what the hell we're talking about because you don't have time to look up the words or to, to even understand... Etym what etymology is, which is the study of truth, the study of the origins of words. If you don't know etymology, if you don't know where the words come from, you might as well not know anything at all because you're limited. I mean, as far as communications, unless you're using telepathy, we're, we're using words all the time. And, and history is in words. It's written down. Uh, and as they say, history is his story. Uh, if you guys never heard that. Okay, his, his story, history, his meaning men, uh, meaning Constantine, meaning people that have deliberately altered history uh, throughout time. Because if you, if, if you can, if I can control what you think happened, I can control what you end up creating in the future. So if I limit what you think humans have accomplished, and if I can get you to perceive the reality a certain way, uh, then that will great hugely affect what you do in the future. Okay, it's just like if I sit there and I tell you. Um, anyway, I don't want to get too preachy, um, but I can I can control your future by telling you a lies about your past. Okay, you can control somebody's future by lying to them about their past because that will dictate what they do about it and, and how they know themselves and most people don't myself included we have to figure out why the hell we're here and who we are in the first place that came here um, so the Garden of Eden so um, now is also the Garden of Need which is very interesting just flip the letters around but the word Eden has the, this very important word in it den if you look up the word Eden, if you look up the word heaven, um, if you look up the word paradise, if you look up these words, you will find the word paradise, um, write this one down for you too. Okay, the word paradise, now they also say like a pair of dice, like die that you roll when you're playing you know, checker, or, you know, when you're at the casino, you roll a pair of dice, uh, you know, good and evil, left, right, that's the law of polarity, um, you know. But the word paradise means para, para, which is Greek, plus the word, let's see if you can guys, you guys can see that, paradisus, paradisus, that's where the word paradise comes from, that's a Greek word, paradisus. This means, um, this literally means an enclosure. This means around an enclosure. This means a circular covering, if you will. Something, basically something that's closed off. Okay, look at the word Eden is also the word den. If you look up what a den is, a den is like a, it's like a, you know, you trap an animal in a den. You keep it, you know, you keep it enclosed about something. You, you know, put a fence around it. So, um, so it's very, very interesting to see some of these words. Um, and, and really what these dens is referring to is actually the planet Earth, which is the plain net Earth, which is the matrix. The word matrix means mother, it means womb, uh, it means the web. Okay. Um, so I don't want to get, you know, too ahead of myself here, but I just want to give you guys some stuff depending on where you're at. So, I mean, if you studying stuff you should probably already know some of this stuff but um so the word Eden is is a den. Another the word Denmark. <laughs> Anybody from Denmark? 
No, I've never been. Um, Alrighty, my friends, so let us continue, if we may, let us continue with where we were talking about how heaven is within the body. Heaven is your own dormant potential. Um, the word heaven actually refers to the head. The word heaven is actually very similar to the word Eden. Uh, it's also very similar to the word head, if you just switch the V out with the D. Um, English does that a lot of times. If you just flip one letter around, you see the real word, uh, or you see the words that are hidden in there. Um, let me just give you a, a very quick example. Um, okay, well, okay, here. So let me give you another quick little example, give you a little sneak preview, right? Just so you see uh, what I'm talking about. So there's the word sneak. Okay, if you flip the letters around, you get the word snake. Okay, that's very interesting, a sneaky little snake, right? This means almost the same thing. Um, okay, sneaks, uh, you know, sneaky little snake. So here's another one, uh, which is very interesting, and we'll get back to the heaven concept in a second. So, rose. Now, if you guys know anything about Greek mythology or any... Greek words is also a word in English is the word eros, eros, which comes from the Greek word basically for love, and it was also a deity that represented love um, on the planet. Was, his name was Eros, or Eros, and it's the word rose, and roses are red, violets are blue. I am not gay, but are you? <laughs> so roses always had to do with love and, um, and showing affection and stuff for some reason, so it's interesting when you unscramble the word rose, it refers to a word that has to do with love. So this just some of the little secrets that's in the words. The word heaven refers to your uh, internal state of mind. Let's put it simply that way. Your heaven, heaven refers to, uh, heaven is a frequency. Okay, um, it says, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's a whole nother thing on its own. Hallowed is like Hollywood almost. Hallowed be thy name, or Hollywood be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. So it's telling you what is going on in heaven is supposed to happen on earth. What is going on in heaven is supposed to also occur on this planet earth. Uh, what is going on inside of you, in your frequency, is also supposed to manifest on the earth. The earth represents your physical body. Anytime you see the word earth... Okay, flip the word earth around, if you guys didn't know that, now you do. Flip the word earth around, you get the word heart. Okay, the earth is your own heart. When you connect to Mother Earth, when you connect to Mother Nature, uh, you're connecting to your own heart. It is a heart connection and you feed off of each other's, you give each other energy back and forth. It's a, you create an etheric bond, if you will. Okay, you also connect to the earth with your feet. When you touch the earth with your hands, even when you push past saliva and you spit on the ground, and you do so in a caring way, you give part of your essence to the earth. Uh, you Even peeing on the ground, the plants love that. Um, your, your fluids are sacred, okay, because they come from the earth, and the earth is a sacred being, although much of humanity has not known that and has been taught to devastate and destroy the planet. Most of humanity has not been taught how to care and respect the earth, so they just ravage and destroy the earth. And look where that has gotten us today, uh, into a shit pile. So, uh, the earth means the body, and then hell, um, well, in a lot of the esoteric stuff and the information that I've uh, also come across, hell actually also refers to the human body, because... Uh, the, the body is thought to be a, a very torturous and a burdensome beast to live in. Um, let me say that again. The body was considered to be a very burdensome, the most foul creature, in the, the most foul thing in all the universe, they say, was the human body because of the fact that you're a spirit being and you're not used to this kind of dense physicality. So hell, well, hell had to do really with your own kundalini fire energy um, that you needed to awaken, um, you know, awaken the kraken, the, the sleeping dragon, 
the kundalini serpent coiled at the base of the spine it needs to ascend uh, it needs to send through your body through the new earth the new heaven um, so this this all this stuff and you could go on and on um, this will probably take several videos to cover um, but I just want to give you guys a brief introduction to the kingdom of heaven being within the body um, as it says in the scripture um, so God God dwells eternally in the body Christ is Christ is sleeping inside of each and every one of us and that frequency needs to be turned on that's what this information does and that's why you need to know that you are supposed to become like the Christ um, but you need to access you need to know what he knew you need to know what the secret societies know you need to know what the one percenters know um, and how they're able to control and manifest and do what they want because they have the knowledge and most people are just running around um, you know doing their daily grind and they don't have time for knowledge but I, I tell you that you don't have time to not have knowledge because knowledge will set you free it will change your whole concept of time and what it means to be alive I really I mean I can still feel that I'm mostly asleep many times I feel like I'm asleep I'm still waking up but if I didn't even have this knowledge I would really be an idiot uh, and I know five, even two years from now five years from now I'm gonna say man you were full of crap back then wake up you know but so we do the best we can and so please study to show yourselves approved um, and again heaven is an internal frequency heaven lies within heaven lies within and if you want to access heaven now when when Jesus spoke to his disciples and the disciples asked Jesus this is from the lost gospel Thomas the disciples asked Jesus oh master oh Jesus and Jesus is a figure which represents spiritual mastery important to under, uh, uh, important to understand that overstand uh, he's a figure that represents spiritual mastery Jesus is code for justice by the way Jesus is a code word for justice so when Jesus is, needs to come back, they say, oh, pray, where's Jesus? People saying, where's justice? Justice needs to come back to the earth. We need to praise. We need to bring back justice because justice is gone. Jesus is gone. Uh, and you must resurrect justice within you and that kind of beneficent, benevolent beingness that you really are. Um, so... So the disciples came to Jesus and they asked Jesus, they said, what do we need to do in order to get into heaven? What do we need to do in order to get into heaven? Jesus looked at his disciples and he said, you, need, you must do two things. Again, being the spiritual master and the student relationship, he said, you must do two things if you wish to make it into the kingdom. Do not tell lies. Do not lie. Do not do what you hate. If you can do these two things, do not tell lies, my friends. Do not tell lies and do not do what you hate. If you can do these two things, you will make it. You will enter into the kingdom. The him, Jesus speaking to his disciples now. Uh, and they said, oh, thank you, Master. Thank you. Okay. Because uh, they were asking, do we need to fast? Do we need to pray? fervently night and day do we need to you know walk 40 miles every morning what do we need to do to access heaven he said don't tell lies it's very simple guys uh, but it's it's the simple God uses the simple to confound the wise God uses the simplicity of the truth the truth is very simple we just sugarcoat it I sugarcoat it we try to make it more complicated than it is but it's a non it's a it's a non-issue the truth is a simple thing should be a simple, simple phenomenon. Um, do not tell lies. Don't lie to yourself. If you don't like tomatoes and your mother cooks tomatoes for you, says eat it, and you eat it because you feel forced and you're lying to yourself, that's not the way to get to this heavenly frequency, if you will. Again, think about it as a, a state of being. You can be on planet Earth and feel like you're in heaven. Now, there's places on the planet 
that look nothing like heaven. <laughs> they resemble uh, what hell would supposedly be like. Um, but again, this is why more people need to start operating on this frequency so that we can in turn... Um, because if you have 100,000 people and another 100,000 come together that's operating on the same frequency, you can do incredible things. But if it's only a few people far and wide that have access to this information and, and many of them uh, don't do something about it, because that's the thing is you can know all this stuff and you don't do anything about it, um, you know, which w it will free you, but you can also help to free other people because as a collective, we are much more powerful. So I like to do what I do also because it helps me. I feel good teaching because I am a teacher, but also because, hell, it frees all of us. And we can all have more fun on this planet. And the planet Earth has been our playground for a long time, and we will continue. Some of us will continue to come back here because it will be a much more beautiful paradise, literally in the... Um, not in terms of an enclosure, it won't be fenced off anymore, as uh, if any of you have heard about the these cosmic quarantines. Um, the certain cosmic quarantines, they have quarantined the planet, uh, or they had, and now I think the quarantine's off. They had sectioned it off from the rest of the cosmic, or the rest of the galaxy, in this section of the galaxy, um, from being interrupted by outside or extraterrestrial or external influences. Um, so we were kind of like a closed, a boxed-in experiment. Hey, let's see what these idiot humans are going to do. Kind of like the Truman Show, if you guys ever seen the movie Truman Show. It's a little bit like that. Uh, very interesting movie. Very interesting that Jim Carrey is uh, going through what he's going through and waking himself up and people up also. Very beautiful. So uh, interesting how those kinds of things happen like that. Um, so... You know, but these are people that have access to this information, and, and so we need to spread it. Um, we need to spread heaven, okay? On earth, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth, as it is in heaven. So what is going on in heaven, or the spirit world, is going to manifest on earth, but it you needs you, it needs you, and me, and we, and your family, and your brother from another mother, and everybody needs to get together, and we need to spread this and create heaven on earth. Um, or to create the heart, right? Bring it back to a heart-based living. Um, okay? Because to live in hell just means you living in your own subconscious doubts and fears, like, like all of us, like all of us have been for too long. Uh, living in hell just, you know, means living in your own fears and um, in your own... Hell is just the own, you know, is your subconscious mind and all the crap that's accumulated in there. Uh, hell is what you manifest when you have no knowledge and you're ignorant. People perish because of a lack of knowledge. People die because of what they don't know. So, I will see you guys on the next video. Thank you. Stay blessed, my friends.